Hey y'all, this is normally the part where I would put in the video of the little girl saying, give me your fucking money. But in the description below, I instead have organizations that you can give your money to. Thank you and have a good day. You're lovely. A while back, I was regularly visiting St. Petersburg as part of me finishing up my degree for college. I decided on a whim to visit the Dali Museum that was also located there. This video will serve as an overview for not only the Dali Museum, but I'll also share my experiences with it and some of the etiquette to follow should you ever step foot in an art gallery or museum. Created as a way to display their love for Dolly's art and friendship, Reynolds and Eleanor Morse had curated a collection of the aforementioned artist's work in their Cleveland home. However, there was only so much space they could use. They initially took their gallery over to Beechwood, but low attendance forced them to move elsewhere. After a while of searching, the collection's new home would be located in sunny St. Petersburg. The museum was dubbed the Dali Museum, and this initial iteration remained until 2010. A new structure was introduced in 2011 and has remained since. Before planning your trip to any art gallery, it's strongly recommended that you visit the website. There is a lot of important information that you can obtain, ranging from times, admission prices, parking, and most importantly, their FAQ and policies. While on the subject of research, do your research on the artist beforehand so you can get a better understanding of not only the art, but obtain important information about the artist as well. Speaking of which, did you know that Dali kept several exotic animals such as an ocelot and an anteater? Or that Surrealists rejected him because he glorified fascism and had a super weird obsession with Hitler? I didn't say they were fun facts. Here's a tip. If you are a college student, I strongly recommend bringing your ID with you so you can get discounts and in some cases, free admission into the museum. Most, if not all art galleries usually offer some form of discount. And if you still aren't sure, it doesn't hurt to check the website. The first thing that you see when you first walk into the Dali Museum is the gift shop. It's a very cute shop that carries not just Dali related goods, but general art related merch and other specific artists such as Frida Kahlo and Vincent van Gogh. Also, there's this scuba man I really, really like. The next thing that appears after the gift shop are three locations. The first which is a little cafe by the name of Cafe Gala, named after Salvador Dali's wife and muse of the same name. Then you have the famous spiral staircase of the museum, which will take you to the galleries of both Dali and a guest exhibition. The last time I went, it was a display of Pablo Picasso, another famous Spanish artist, and it dealt specifically with the theme of bullfighting. In a museum as small as the Dali, it always helps to be aware of your surroundings during your visit. The biggest thing to keep in mind when you're taking pictures or video at an art gallery is to make sure that the flash is turned off. There is a reason why all art galleries strictly prohibit the use of flash photography. Aside from the fact that it is incredibly distracting and annoying to deal with, the flash that emits from the camera actually causes damage to the paints that are in the, well, paintings. While on the subject of photography, always make sure that you understand exactly what their policies are regarding the usage of said material that you produce. Believe it or not, the Dali Museum only permits a personal usage license on the footage that you use. It does not allow any form of commercial usage whatsoever, which means I have absolutely no idea as to whether or not I should be able to monetize this video. I'll keep you updated in the future. Then you have the outdoor area which comprises of some statues that were planned when Dali was alive but weren't constructed until after its death. If you take a look underneath you, you will see a quite literal spiral that expands throughout the garden. 
This is what is called the golden spiral, otherwise known as the Fibonacci sequence, where each number is the sum of the two preceding ones. So for example, one plus one equals two, two plus one equals three, three plus two equals five, and so on. You also have the iconic mustache that functions as a photo op. My favorite things in the garden are the tree and maze. The wish tree is self-explanatory, but the reasoning behind it just puts a soft spot in my heart. Here's what the website has to say. The ficus with its compound trunk, its drooping branches, appears a tree designed by Dali, a botanical equivalent of Dali's soft watches, a melting tree. It embodies the transformation Dali's words speak of. If this tree could be Dali's wish, it equally can carry our wishes. And then we have the aforementioned maze. What makes this maze unique is that all paths lead to the same direction and there are no dead ends. The website expands upon this. Happily, there are no wrong turns in this labyrinth. It is not a maze. It is universal, only going one way. A maze has dead ends, wrong turns, deceptive courses, and frustrations. But entering this labyrinth, you only have to follow the course under your feet. And by simple persistence, you arrive at the center. And what exactly is in the center? A cypress tree. So why this tree in particular? Two things. First of all, cypress trees are typically located in coastal areas, primarily Spain. And Dali is a Spanish artist. And second off, in Mediterranean cultures, the cypress is usually seen as a sign of hospitality. 